Good morning, and welcome to Seattle Community Church Online Worship. We are so glad that you have joined us this morning. My name is Pastor Brenna, and if this is your first time joining us, we want to offer you a special welcome. We hope that when we're able to get together in our building once more, that you will come and join us and meet our amazing community of members and friends. Look, we know we've been apart for a long time, but just because we are apart doesn't mean that we can't be connected. We have a few ways that you can still see your friends and your favorite people from SEC. One of those is Pastor Fred is still doing his theology on tap. I'm gonna be starting a new Bible study in a few weeks. And this Saturday, we have another one of our incredible cooking classes, and this time it'll be led by Wanda. So if you're interested in any of those things, you can go on our website, sign up, and make sure that you can be a part of what's happening here at SCC. We have two announcements. Just because we're apart doesn't mean that things still aren't happening here at SCC. And the first of those is this, that it is elder election time. We need great leadership here at SCC, and we can't do it without you. So if you have someone that's on your heart or on your mind that you think would be a great elder, go ahead and nominate them. You can find it in your Thursday newsletter where you can go online and send us an email with your nomination for elders for the 2021, 20, starting with 2021. Uh, also, lastly, it is the time when OM2 is gathering uh, missionaries and mission support groups applications that are looking for long-term funding for the year, for next year. So if there is a person or a group that is doing incredible work here in Seattle or around the world that you want to make sure gets help funded by SCC, please, please, please make sure that you get those applications in by the 26th of July. If you need that application, you can find it online. You can also email Jay or myself or Bo and we can make sure to get you that application so that people serving God all around the world can continue to do their work with help from us here at SEC. Friends, we are so glad that you've joined us for worship. Let us prepare our hearts in praise. Welcome to Seattle Community Church. Please join with me as we sing When You Call My Name. I, I picked this song because uh, as we go through this struggling time, uh, there are a lot of opportunities for us to share God's love with others, be it our neighbors or any other co-workers or friends that are going through struggling times to uh, lend a uh, helping hand or a you know, caring ear. So as we sing this song, may you think about how is God calling you? Yeah. 
this time to uh, welcome one another with the passing of the peace through texting, through email, phone calls, all right? Hi, SCC family. It's Ellen here. I hope everybody's doing well, staying safe, and taking care of each other during COVID-19 quarantine. I just want to say a special thank you to the ministries that have made me feel um, like I'm in their thoughts. Uh, Women's Ministry, thank you for this heartfelt uh, note that really brightened my day during quarantine. Uh, Esther and Boston, thanks for the chicken wings. Um, and to any young adults out there who are watching this, um, if you want to join our small groups, we still do Zoom calls and we try to keep in touch uh, during quarantine. So please reach out to Boston Johnson for more information. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this week. And even though sometimes things are hard, Lord, thank you for those in our lives who um, just brighten our day and really show us your love uh, through their words and their actions. And Lord, I pray that amidst um, a virus, um, that we can still think about other people um, outside of our close friends and family and really try to serve um, those who might not be um, as well off as we are. God, I just thank you so much for all the blessings that you give us. Help us to share those with uh, everyone around us. Uh, we just thank you for this day and I pray that you bless this message that we're about to receive. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Good morning. Once again, welcome to Seattle Community Church. Today, we have a very special guest that's gonna share the message with us. His name is Dr. Alex G. from Madison, Wisconsin. He is the pastor of Fountain of Life Covenant Church. Uh, he is an author, writer, and social activist. I know you're gonna be blessed by his message, so please help me in welcoming him. Good morning, Seattle Community Church, SCC. My name is Alex G, and I'm so glad to um, be able to offer and bring this message to you. It's been years since I've been with your congregation and I just want you guys to know that I hope that you're safe and that you're doing well in the midst of all that's happening in our world. I also want to give a shout out to, um, to my friend, Pastor Fred. Um, and listen, I love this man and not just because years ago his wife Jean and his sister Dorothy used to pay me to play with him. Yeah. Um, but now I do it and not for the money. It's just, I just, I just like the guy. Pastor Fred's a good friend of, of mine, very dear friend of mine. And anything that we can do to help each other in ministry, anything that I can do to help him and the people who he leads and love is really a joy to me. Today, I wanted to minister to you out of Acts chapter 10. And it's a, it's a, it's a message about the power of the Holy Spirit in bringing true transformation. And so I just want to um, offer up a prayer and then move right into the message. Father, open our ears and our understanding that we will respond to your word. Jesus, offer us the grace to embody the selfless life that you lived. Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, empower us, energize us, and transform us that we will be salt and light in this world. Bless SCC Church and thank you for their faithfulness and thank you for their commitment and their work in the Seattle area and just put wind beneath their wings and allow them to be, to be even more effective. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I'm reading from the, um, the NIV version and um, it's about the transformation of Cornelius. Um, and in verse nine it says, at about noon the following day as they were approaching the journey to the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles of the earth and birds of the air. And then a voice told him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and immediately the sheep was taken back to heaven. While Peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. They called out asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. 
While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you. So get up, go downstairs, do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. Well, I, my prayer is that God would just bless us and give us insight um, into his word and, and to his message. Today's message is entitled, True Conversion. The part of the passage that I couldn't read, just because of the sake of time, was the beginning verses in chapter 10. Jesus has ascended back to heaven. The Holy Spirit has received the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus says that you're going to be my disciples in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the utmost parts of the world. And in the book of Acts, we've watched it move through those rings, through Samaria. Now the gospel comes to the utmost part of the world, parts of the world, the Gentiles. And so um, Cornelius is considered the first Gentile convert. And he is a part of the Italian regiment. He's a leader in the Italian regiment. And he's a good man. He prays. Scripture says God hears his prayers. And he gives. He supports those who are hurting. What's so interesting in this story, and we're familiar, many of us who are, who are students of the Bible are familiar with Peter having this experience and the sheep coming down. But I want to give you the front part of the story. We're about to experience reconciliation between the Jews and the Gentiles, the power of the gospel to bring people together. In such a broken world, in such a broken reality, I need to believe that there's hope for unity. Ethnic groups, nationalities, countries, corporations, churches, denominations. If the church of Jesus Christ is not an example of unity, who will be? Who can be? And so here's what's interesting in this story. The Spirit speaks to Cornelius and then Peter. True reconciliation has to happen when God is speaking. You just can't force people to be ready to be reconciled. God spoke to Cornelius and spoke to him about Peter, and then God speaks to Peter about Cornelius. I think what we've got to pray with regards to reconciliation and healing is God speak. Holy Spirit, speak. And so this angel appears to Cornelius and it says, hey, Cornelius, God has heard you. First of all, can I just say this? God knew the Gentiles' name. We think that because people aren't worshiping the way we think they should, living the way they should, being the way they should, they're unknown to God. The angel calls Cornelius, Cornelius, God has heard your prayers. So not only does God know your name, God has been watching what you're doing. There are people who God is drawing into the family and God is speaking to them and God is seeing them and God knows their name. That might change the way we talk to people about Christ. Rather than telling people, why don't you just come out of obscurity and just meet God? And they need to come out of obscurity and meet God. But what if we told people, look, God already knows your name. God knows your pain. God knows your story. Why don't you bring it to the God who knows you? Thank you, Jesus. Whew. Sorry, let me slow down. I'm getting a little excited. My black Pentecostal side's about to come out. Down boy, down boy. So Cornelius sends people to go get Peter. This is what the angel tells him to do. While they're going to get Peter, which is about 30 miles away. First of all, this is hunger for truth. God, give people hunger for truth. They walked about 30 miles. While they're approaching Peter, Peter falls into a trance up on top of the house. And we know this story, the sheep comes down, Peter, eat. And Peter's looking and it's like birds and reptiles. And Peter's like, I'm a good Jewish boy. I've never had any of that. It's not going in this good Jewish mouth. Here's the thing. It was Gentile food. And those, who, if the Gentile food was nasty, then those who ate that food was nasty. Now, this is something I understand as an African-American, I love soul food. And so sometimes when you, you know, just years ago in school or my first jobs out of college, I might take some of my soul food to work and warm up in the microwave. And, you know, people might not like the, like the way some of the stuff smell when it warmed up. Like, oh, what's that? And when you insult my food, you insult my culture, you insult me. So Peter really was saying, looking at the food and saying, gross. We don't eat that. Nasty, uncircumcised Gentiles eat that stuff. And so if the food is nasty, those who eat it is nasty. 
Peter had it already in his mind that Gentile people were nasty because their food was nasty because that was the way they were given the law. God says, don't you call anything unclean that I've called clean. But, but basically God was saying was, dang, Peter, your standard's higher than mine. The sheet goes back up into heaven. Scripture never says that Peter ate it. Scripture never said that Peter ate it. And so while Peter's still trying to think about the vision, the men, the Gentiles, who Cornelius sent, are knocking at the door. Is there a Peter here? Is there a Simon Peter here? The Spirit then speaks to Peter. There are men down looking for you. I have sent them. Go quickly. Do not hesitate. Peter goes down. God says, don't hesitate. Peter goes down. He says, what do you want? Like, why are you here? Um, not hello. Come in and tell me what the Lord is saying. Like, what do you, what do you want? What, do, what are you doing here? Listen, Peter walked on water. He said to have cut off the high priest's servant's ear. Jesus attached it. He saw the miracles of the loaves and the fish, Lazarus coming from the dead, the widow of Nain's son being raised. I mean, he rolled with Jesus and saw miracles. And Jesus says, Pete, you're going to go with me and go for me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the utmost parts of the world. Where did that go? How could Peter forget what he personally heard Jesus say? Then now the father is speaking, saying, rise, Peter, slay and eat. I'm sorry, I still know that in King James. Rise, Peter, kill and eat. It's like, nope, I'm not doing it. Then the spirit is saying, go and follow this, these men. Do not hesitate. He's hesitating. What, what, what are y'all doing here? So Peter gets up. He goes with them. And as he's approaching it, it's, 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 a, you know, it's a long journey. According to the next chapter, Peter takes six men with him. Bold Peter, I'll walk on the water. I'll die with you, Jesus. You're not going to take my Lord. Take that and we'll cut your ear off. But when he came to interacting with Gentiles, he took six men with him. They only came with three. Peter sent six. This racial stuff is of the devil. This tension, it's, it's evil. He gets there. Cornelius is so excited that he falls before Peter like to worship him. Peter says, no, no, get up, get up. I'm just a man like you. I'm just a man like you. But then Peter tells him, but you know, it's against the law to be here. Like, no, don't bow to me. I'm not better than you. But it's illegal for me to be in your house. This is just how long the church, the people of God, have been wrestling with this stuff. Cornelius gets up, tells the story. Peter begins to preach. He begins to tell them what happened to Jesus. The Holy Spirit falls on Cornelius and his household and his, 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 um, his men, his team. And Peter and those with him say, wow, the Holy Spirit has fallen on them the same way it fell on us on the blessed day of Pentecost. Peter said, I, who can deny them water? Was that hypothetical? Or were people saying, Peter, no, no water. Like, they can get the Holy Spirit, but no, no baptism. Who can deny them water? And he baptized them. In the next chapter, Peter has to justify this. And in Galatians 2, Peter is still running from the Gentiles, and Paul rebukes him in Galatians 2. The mighty Peter struggled with race relations. So this story is about the Jews and the Gentiles coming together because of the gospel. And Peter says... Now I know for sure, for true, God is not a respecter person. Peter got an aha of God Almighty in the presence of Cornelius. This message is so powerful that Peter now says, I now see God differently because of how God is working in other people. I now understand God. He walked with Jesus. He walked on water. He watched people being raised from the dead. And he says, I just got an aha, an epiphany about God. God loves everybody, which was the message of Jesus Christ and the purpose of his incarnation. That's powerful. So let me tell you three ahas from this message because I've got to stay within my time frame or Pastor Fred's going to get me. 
One is this is not about Cornelius' conversion only. It's about Peter's as well. Peter had seen the world through such a Jewish gospel that he had no room in his theology, no room in his mind, no room in his heart for non-Jewish people who have not converted to Ju to, um, to, 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 um, to be a Judaized or to be a convert in, into um, being Hebrew. He, he, unless these folks are going to go through some rituals and become circumcised as adult men, unless they went through this, this process of, of be, being Judaized, there's no way that God could love them. So Peter's like, I didn't see any circumcision knives, and I don't see any public confession that would bring them into Ju to Judaism. That's the word I was trying to think of. Judaism. So can God really do anything? He said, oh, God loves Gentiles who have not ascribed to Judaism. That blew Peter's mind, which meant Peter understood God was bigger than his theology. What color is your gospel? What gender is your gospel? What denomination is your gospel? Because if you can't believe that God is bigger than your perception, you have just diminished God, and you really don't want to do that. This is not just about the Gentile who worked hard and gave money and prayed and gave alms, and so God loved him and saved him. It was in the presence of this Jewish man that God revealed his heart for the entire world that Peter said, I now understand it. God loves everybody. Do you believe that God loves everybody? Do you believe that God loves everybody? What color is your gospel? Does it make room for people you don't like? Does it make room for people you don't understand? Does it make room for people who are not your ethnicity or color? Does it make room? Do people feel like it makes room when they come into your churches or your Zoom um, situation? Do they feel that the love of God is available to them? I grew up in a time where I belonged to a black Pentecostal church. And in that space, if you were not Pentecostal, these are the folks who disciple me. Your salvation was questioned. If you didn't practice things like speaking in tongues, could you really have the Holy Spirit? I had a gospel that was very narrow. And if you didn't fit in that, I wasn't even sure if I could have fellowship with you because I didn't even know if you were a follower of Christ. God had to break that and give me folks who loved him, who God loved, but they were not from that little island that I was on. And it gave me a better, a broader, a larger perspective of my God, our God. What color is your gospel? Are you so busy following rhetoric or dogma that you miss God's love for God's people? I hope not. Second point was that Peter had the form of godliness, but he denied the power. He denied the power. And so by understanding that God loved everybody, that he was stronger with Cornelius, it allowed Peter to experience more power. There are four clear uh, ex experiences of Pentecost when the gospel be go when goes be beyond a barrier, like in Acts 2 when there's unity, or when the message hits the Samaritans, or here when it hits the, um, the Gentiles. When you see this happening, when you see the Spirit just moving people beyond their own cultural boundaries, new power comes. And so Peter just had this form of godliness because he was telling God, no, 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 God, you're too easy on these folks. When he began to move closer to loving the people God loved, when that power fell and he saw God moving on these folks and God's heart for these folks, it caused him to develop a heart for those folks as well. So one, this is about Peter's conversion to the fullness of God. It is in serving other people and understanding God's love for other people that your heart for God expands. Two, don't just have the form of godliness. Don't just have the rule books, but don't know the power of God. When Peter saw the power of God fall on Gentiles, he realized that there was a part of God he was missing, and it opened his heart to receive more of God. That's why he said, oh my God, Eureka, God loves you. I understand God better. When you understand God better, you get power for serving God, and there's power in unity. The more diverse our churches become, the more we love and hold each other the more God's power is going to fall on us. And the third point is that the Holy Spirit that directed Cornelius to Peter and Peter to Cornelius 
that same spirit guides us into our own humanity and into the world's brokenness. That spirit led Peter and revealed the prejudice in his heart, the racism in his heart, but still loved Peter and still sent Peter on a mission to Cornelius. So the role of the Holy Spirit is to call us out of our isms and our islands and our reasons for being separate and then sends us into a chaotic world to be God's instrument of peace. Peter was called to be God's instrument of peace, not tool for division. Are you an instrument of peace or tool of division? Do you seek to understand? Do you seek to lean in? Do you seek to know the mind and the heart of God? Because if not, our gospel is limited. Our access to God is limited. Our understanding of God is limited. Therefore, the work of the church and the people of God is limited. But when you understand like Peter did in verse 36, God wants the entire world saved. How can you not love those who God loves? How can you not share a meal with those who God loves? How can you not offer grace or love to those who God loves? So as I wrap up, I want you to understand we are living a very interesting time. And we are so divided. And people of color are seeing division and African-American people, our Asian-American people. We can't ignore that. I know a lot of stuff has happened to black people. But to my Asian-American brothers and sisters, the stuff that's come to the light because of COVID-19, that stuff is real. We know it. And we pray for you. I pray for you. I know what it's like to feel some of that because of a cultural lens that you're an outsider, that I'm an outsider. We're given hope through the gospel. The Spirit spoke to Cornelius and Peter. God is going to speak and is speaking to the two groups and say, find each other. Last thing I want to say, because i got to wrap it up. Cornelius did not have to leave his home. The Spirit said, send some men to go find Peter. Peter had to go find Cornelius. Why? He had power. He was the insider. Insiders, you can't tell the outsiders, well, come over here and I'll give you some food. Come over here and I'll give you some gospel. Come over here. No. Those with power, God said, Peter, pack a bag and go. You pack a bag, Peter, you travel, you make the journey. Why? Because God incarnate came from heaven to earth. God, and well, and coming to earth became incarnate. But God came to us. He sent Peter because he was an insider. He was Jewish. He was male. He, he had known Christ. You go to Cornelius. SCC Church, don't wait for people to come to you. You go to them because of your power, because of your position in Christ because of your status in the community, you go to the lost sheep of Israel. I got to wrap up. I already went one minute over. I love you all. I appreciate you so much. I can't wait until we can worship again um, in person. Pastor Fred, it means the world to me that you've asked me to speak to your folks. I love you. God bless you all. Now it's time to give our offering. Wherever you are, we want to invite you to be faithful in your giving because we really believe that our faithfulness in giving is our response to God's grace and what God has already done for us. Please know that it is your faithfulness that really does make this ministry possible. Thank you. Thank you for the message. And now please join with me as we sing, You Are My All in All. And as we sing this song, may you reflect upon how Jesus is our strength and our treasure in this life.
CC family. I hope you are all doing well during this hard time. I miss you all so much. Now, please receive this blessing. My friends, may you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. To God be the glory, now and forevermore. Amen. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Thank you.